and girls. Would you like to learn how to draw my friend? His name is Clumsy Crab. And all you have to do is just watch. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that bell so you can get weekly notifications of my videos when they come out. And share them with a friend. Clumsy Crab by Ruth Galloway. This is a fantastic book and it can serve as a confidence booster to children. Although we may have different physical characteristics, they make us who we are and we should embrace them because we are all unique. Now get your pencil and paper and let's get ready to draw a clumsy crab. Let's draw a circle. Go round and round and round until you can see the circle appear. Now I'm going to make two smaller circles for his eyes. And then I am going to attach the circles by drawing two lines. And let's make two small circles inside for his pupils and some eyelashes to keep the sand out of his eyes. Let's draw a big smiling face, put two U's on the sides for dimples. Let's make the letter U for his claws and attach them with two straight lines. I'm going to draw the letter V inside each of the claws. And now, clumsy, has two claws. We're now going to make his legs by making arrow shapes. Three on each side. And then we're going to double them. We're going to let the arrows connect at the bottom. We're going to have three and three on the left, three and three on the right. Now I'm making wavy lines to create seaweed. Seaweed on both sides. How about if we make some fish? Fish are so easy. I can make an almond shape and put some triangles on the ends. Let's do it on both sides. We can have big ones, small ones, medium sized ones. How about some rocks at the bottom? Crabs use rocks sometimes to hide in them. Now let's make some more fish with the almond shapes. When I say almond, it's an oval that looks like a football shape. Three triangles, circle for the eye, and now I'm going to make wavy lines. Up and down, up and down. I'm going in back of the seaweed and clumsy crab and the fish. And I'm going to make one more. And I think it will be time to start adding color. Now, you're probably saying, wow, why are you putting down that lime yellow, Mr. Smith? Well, it's an under color. I like to sometimes put certain colors down and then I'm going to mix them. And by mixing and blending colors, it will make my colors even richer because I'm going to put some reds and some oranges over top of that yellow but by having that yellow it will make my reds and oranges much brighter and it will just give them a much enriched color.
and notice how Mr. Smith tries so hard to outline the shapes first and then I use my one stroke method to add colors. I try very hard not to go outside the shapes because I'm using alcohol markers and there's no erasing. Now I'm adding some oranges and I'm still doing my what I would call my ground colors the oranges and the yellows and then I'll be adding my reds later on on top and it will really make clumsy crab look like he's round and not just flat and those colors just blend it in so nicely. And I'm even going to add some darker reds to it too. Because we want him to have that, I want him to look almost like a, a red ball. I was so inspired by this book. Parents, teachers, it's a wonderful story to share with your classroom, with your kids. I'm not trying to sell it. I have no interest in the book or anything like that. It's something I used in the classroom with my kids and they were so receptive to it and it helps to make them even more receptive to making art when they can hear a story and the story hits the home they visualize it in their mind in their heart and then when it comes to drawing the picture i think it makes picture making become visually alive. Many years ago when I first started teaching I had a mentor. He taught me that books were the key to opening a child's imagination. And once I could open their imagination that I could almost have them do anything. And I've stuck to this my whole entire career. Every kid is different, and some kids can't express themselves with words as they can do in art. And that's why having a good, strong art program in every school is, is fantastic. Because where a kid cannot excel one way, they might be able to excel another way. Now, I'm in here adding my different blues inside my wavy lines. So I'm getting this feeling of being underwater. And I hope you like my little bubble effect. I liked it too. I'm using a mixture of not just markers, but I'm also using color pencils over top of markers. We call this mixed media. You don't always have to use one material. You can use an assortment of materials to be able to express your creativity. And when you do that, you call it mixed media. I feel sometimes color pencil over marker, marker over color pencil ends up having a great effect that you can't get with one but you can definitely get with two. Oh clumsy crab is coming along. We're making these bubbles bubbles 
Now I'm even adding something else. I'm using some white paint with a Q-tip because this white really stands out. I think Clumsy Crab is almost ready to go help his friend that got caught in the seaweed. And that was the one thing that helped to boost Clumsy Crab's confidence. By finding a way to use his claws in a positive way to help his friend. And he knew after that everything was gonna be okay. He had found his place. He had found a way to be a part of his community. And he was happy. Thank you for coming to Mr. Smith's art room today. I hope you enjoy How to Draw Clumsy Crab. And I hope that you share it with your children, either at home or in your classroom. Or kids, I hope you try to draw with me. Take care. Bye-bye.